As it tends to be with any massive franchise like Dragon Ball, when the years roll on and the story expands further and further, some things are likely to fall through the cracks. This is to say that there are quite a few unsolved mysteries in the world of Dragon Ball, from the status of the moon to the exact biology of Saiyan tales. So let's take a look at some of the craziest unanswered questions in all of Dragon Ball. But before we get started, we have a brand new channel for you called The Binger. Head on over there for more great movie content. Starting off, we have a very recent mystery from the final moments of Dragon Ball Super Broly. After learning of Broly's pure heart and seeing that his battle with Gogeta might end him, Chile and Lemo decide to save Broly. So they stole Freeze's Dragon Balls and summoned Shenron by holding Kukuno hostage and forcing him to reveal the method for granting wishes. With Shenron summoned, Chile made the wish to transport Broly far away and keep him safe from the battle, resulting in the Saiyan being returned to the planet he and his father had resided on for many years. After this wish was made, Shenron disappeared and the Dragon Balls dispersed across the world as they normally do. Wait, what? Hasn't Shenron been able to grant three wishes for a while now? How come it was just one and done? Shenron hasn't been limited to just one wish since the Cell Saga. Launch was introduced early in Dragon Ball as a companion to Roshi, Krillin, and Goku. Although we don't exactly know why she stuck around, Launch was more or less kidnapped by Goku and Krillin as a means of getting Master Roshi to train them. It's pretty messed up when we say it out loud. Regardless, the character was introduced as a form of comic relief, since she had a dual personality that was triggered by sneezing. Whenever she was blonde, she was a badass gun-toting bank robber. But when she sneezed and her hair turned blue, she was a kind-hearted and caring person. So what happened to her? The character was a pretty big part of Roshi's life, and she suddenly disappeared from the franchise when Dragon Ball Z rolled around, only making filler cameos. The life and times of launch after Dragon Ball is easily one of the biggest mysteries of the franchise. Remember back in the Namek Saga when Goku broke out the ultimate exposition device? Or, we mean, when he broke out a mind-reading technique that allowed him to catch up on all that had happened on Namek and never used it ever again. This telepathic ability let Goku learn everything he needed to learn about the situation on Namek, incredibly fast. So why hasn't it ever been used again? Why doesn't Goku use it to steal his opponent's techniques or actually learn how to properly interact with people? It's one of the biggest mysteries in Dragon Ball as to why Goku has never used this miracle technique a second time time. Speaking of Goku on Namek, one of the biggest burning questions of the franchise is how the Super Saiyan managed to escape from the planet as it was exploding. In the original sequence, we saw Goku attempt to find a way off Namek, only to come up short and explode along with the planet. But when he described how he survived to his friends, it was revealed that he found an escape pod. In the first version, Goku couldn't find a space pod and had watched Frieza's ship sink into lava. But in the version he told later, he was inside Frieza's ship at some point, which led him to see a battle pod. The second version of these events shows us just how Goku escaped from Namek, but we clearly saw those events not happen at the end of the Frieza saga, leaving us with one of the series' biggest continuity errors. Captain Ginyu's a powerful foe in his own right, but his greatest skill was his ability to switch bodies with whomever he chooses, allowing him to gain the physical attributes of that person. Known as Body Change, this ability has served Captain Ginyu well over the years, his purple horned form being one of the many bodies he's acquired in his time. Knowing that his purple body from the Frieza saga isn't Ginyu's first body, the question arises, what did he look like originally? How many times has Captain Ginyu switched bodies over the years? What kind of alien was his original body. Did his entire alien race have the ability to switch bodies? It's said that very few people have seen Ginyu's original form, and we'd like to know what it looks like since it's one of the biggest mysteries in the Dragon Ball franchise. Goku first broke out the Kaioken in his battle against Nappa, and later in his battle with Vegeta. The technique, which temporarily multiplied his power level, was essential in defeating both evil Saiyans. Yet, despite the technique being so powerful, King Kai only taught it to Goku, and not Tien, Yamcha, Piccolo, or Chaosu when they trained with him, failing to teach them the Spirit Bomb as well. Goku didn't even bother to share these powerful techniques with his friends. Why is that? Why don't the warriors of Dragon Ball share their techniques with each other? There are Tons of very powerful techniques in the world of Dragon Ball that are usually limited to being the signature move of a single warrior. And even if there are a few shared moves, they're usually just learned by association rather than sharing. How much easier would things be if everyone knew instant transmission? 
Goku and the moon don't have the greatest relationship. Just like a werewolf, Goku turns into a monster at the sight of a full moon. But instead of a wolf, it's a great ape. The transformation occurred because of both his tail and the moon, so of course Master Roshi made the logical conclusion to destroy the freaking moon. Yeah, that's right. Instead of cutting off Goku's tail, Master Roshi destroyed the moon. The moon was eventually restored by Kami, but was later destroyed again by Piccolo, who did so to halt Gohan's great ape transformation. He then cut off Gohan's tail and just, uh, left the Earth without its moon. There was no stated restoration after this, yet the moon was shown in the background later on. Even if we can assume this was also Kami's work, the fact that it was never fully stated has left the series with a pretty big mystery. Maybe this isn't a question that's on every Dragon Ball fan's mind, but it's still a mystery that has been left unsolved ever since Vegeta was first introduced. Of course, we're talking about the mystery of Vegeta's mother. The series has made it a point to showcase Vegeta's father, King Vegeta, who had a significant role in Dragon Ball Super Broly. We've also been introduced to Vegeta's brother, Tarbul, and thanks to the movie, we know that he's also canon now. But what about Vegeta and Tarbul's mother? What the heck happened to her? Was King Vegeta so mad at her for producing a weak child? child like Tarbolt that he banished her or even worse, took her life. He does have that evil Mirror Universe Star Trek goatee, so we wouldn't put such a terrible act past him, since, as we all know, the goatee is the mark of a truly evil villain. Speaking of Tarbol, he's one of the few Saiyans alive that still has a tail, which brings up another mystery of the franchise. How exactly do Saiyan tails work? We obviously know that they're the key to a Saiyan's power, containing the glands needed for a great ape transformation, as well as a bundle of nerves that make it a weak point for most Saiyans if grabbed. But beyond this, we don't know too much. Specifically, we don't know how the regrowing of tails works. Goku got his tail cut off three times, and it regrew twice. But after Kami cut it off, it never grew back. This could lead us to believe that after the third cut, Saiyan tails ceased to grow back. But Vegeta's didn't grow back after after it was cut by Yajirobe, so how exactly does it work? Similar to Vegeta's mother, this mystery isn't exactly pressing or all that important. But it's still worth noting that we never knew what Goku was up to during his solo training. Throughout the rest of Dragon Ball, we at least got an idea of what Goku did during training or a time skip. But after defeating the Red Ribbon Army, he just went off on his own, coming back four years later without an explanation. So what exactly did he do? We know he went off on his own because Master Roshi told him to do so. But we don't actually know what went on during those four years. Goku obviously knows how to survive on his own, but where did he go? Did he encounter new friends? How come we never met them? How did he get stronger just by living in the wild? Again, not the most important questions, but an unsolved mystery nonetheless. Zamasu's Zero Mortals plan is, uh, very very convoluted. In true anime villain fashion, Zamasu's plot to rid the multiverse of mortals involved teaming up with an alternate timeline version of himself. That version of himself wishing to switch bodies with Goku, wishing for his own body to be immortal, and finally starting his extinction plan in a universe that he didn't reside over and in a timeline he didn't belong to. Still with us? No? I can't blame you. Perhaps one of the weirdest parts of this plot was the fact that Zamasu decided to start his Zero Mortals plan in the future of a timeline and universe that he did didn't belong to. Sure, he stated that Goku and Trunks were the inspiration for his plan, but that doesn't really explain why he didn't stay where he was and start with his own time and universe. He killed Gawasu. Who's gonna stop him after that? Like actual cats, Beerus is known to sleep for a long time. In fact, before he woke up in Battle of Gods and the Dragon Ball Super Saga that adapted it, he'd been sleeping for nearly 40 years, waking from dreams of battling a Super Saiyan God. Upon learning that he could find Saiyans on Earth, Beerus recalled that it was the planet with rude dinosaurs, which he had wiped out for said rude behavior. But wait, we've seen dinosaurs on Earth in a number of Dragon Ball and DBZ episodes. So what gives? Did Beerus just remember incorrectly? Did he destroy a different evolutionary line of dinosaurs and the ones we've seen are a different line? Why would it be written in that he destroyed Earth's dinosaurs when they've always been a prominent part of the fauna in the world of Dragon Ball? Did someone bring back the dinos via a failed Jurassic Park-esque experiment? When Goku first died, we learned a bit about how the afterlife and other world works. First of all, you're greeted by King Yemma. 
after a long line, of course, who looks at your life and sends you to heaven or hell like a big red horned Saint Peter. We also learn that not everyone gets to keep their body after death, as most souls are just that. Souls without vessels that are either damned or sent to an eternal paradise. If they were a great hero of some kind, they could keep their body in Otherworld. Yet we've seen plenty of bad guys and non-heroic people retain their body in the afterlife. Maybe anyone whose power is high enough gets to keep their body. That might explain it, but for now it's still a mystery. As if the inconsistencies with Saiyans' tales weren't enough, there's also a mystery surrounding the tales of half-Saiyans. Gohan was born with a tail, and as far as we know, it stopped growing back after the second time it was cut off. Additionally, Trunks and Goten were shown without tails from their very first appearances, and from what we've seen, Bulla hasn't been shown with a tail in Dragon Ball Super or Broly. So what's the deal? Akira Toriyama has stated it has to do with genetics and recessive traits, but if that was true, then Gohan wouldn't have had a tail to begin with. The real-world reason is likely that Toriyama forgot about Tails by the time these characters were introduced, but maybe they were just preemptively cut off. After all, having a giant ape trunks burst out of Capsule Corp probably wouldn't be good for the company's public image. Speaking of Trunks and Goten, we've got one giant question concerning them. Why aren't they allowed to get older? Gohan was allowed to grow up and have several different character arcs as he grew from a child to a warrior with his own way, and later to a loving father. Yet, his younger brother isn't granted the same thing. They're not alone either, since it's an absolute mystery as to why Krillin and Android 18's daughter Marin is still a little kid. Go take a quick look at the Dragon Ball wiki. Marin's seven during the time Beerus shows up on Earth, yet she's actually acting and being treated like a toddler. What's going on? When Goku and Beerus fought each other, their godly punches were enough to threaten the fabric of the universe, each clash causing a shockwave across nearly every galaxy. This concept was forgotten about until a similar occurrence happened in Dragon Ball Super Broly. During the fight between Broly and Super Saiyan Blue Gogeta, something strange happened. The two warriors were transported to an alternate dimension, their massive power levels literally breaking reality for a moment before returning them to their original dimension. Or at least that's the running theory. We don't actually know what happened during that fight in Broly, and if it was a result of too much power clashing, then why hasn't this happened earlier? Why didn't it happen when Vegito fought fused Zamasu? Is there a chance that a fight from one universe could break into another? Hopefully the franchise explores this phenomenon in the rumored new episodes of Super. In one of our other Dragon Ball videos, we looked at all the new information that Dragon Ball Super Broly had added to the lore of the series. One of the items in that video was the fact that there were two other survivors of Planet Vegeta's destruction. Saiyans on a mission with Nappa, Raditz, and Vegeta, all of whom refused to go back to their home planet. We all know the fates of the other survivors of the destruction of the Saiyans, although since Vegeta killed Nappa later on, it's not crazy to think he did the same to these two anonymous Saiyans, who may have proven to be too weak in his eyes. Master Roshi is immortal, we've known this for quite some time. However, the source of his immortality was only just revealed in Dragon Ball Super, said to be the result of consuming the Paradise Plant, otherwise known as the Paradise Herb. Regardless of its name, we know Master Roshi has been eating it for quite some time, allowing him to retain immortality over the years. While we doubt Goku would partake in something like immortality, we've always wondered why none of the other warriors or their families have asked to be immortal like Master Roshi and Fortune Teller Baba. It had helped the Earth to have its greatest warriors around forever to defend the planet, and we're sure Bulma would love to stay young and beautiful, since she wanted to use the Dragon Balls to do exactly that. So why doesn't Roshi share the Paradise Plant, and why doesn't anyone else take advantage of it? Android 16 wasn't like his fellow numbered androids. He was actually what his name implied, a completely mechanical robot created to look like a human, specifically Dr. Giro's deceased son. 16's fully robotic body was unfortunately what prevented him from being revived following his destruction, but we never really got an explanation as to why. Wouldn't a human be much harder to revive than a machine? Couldn't they have just wished to have his parts back together and then they could figure out how to reboot him from there? And another thing, why didn't the Z Fighters try asking Purunga to see if he could revive Android 16. The two dragons clearly have different rules to their wishes, so we imagine there might be some leeway with reviving artificial life. Any way you look at it, Android 16's failed revival raises a lot of questions. A mystery that makes us think Toriyama just didn't like the character. Last, and certainly not least, we have one of the biggest 
plot holes in the entire Dragon Ball franchise. For context, it's been made clear that Goku and friends don't really want their personal lives to be invaded by people who are curious about their superhuman martial arts abilities. And that's a fair reason to keep their power secret, but here's the thing, they've failed at doing so a number of times. Throughout all of the tournament sagas of Dragon Ball, the world saw Goku, Krillin, Yamcha, Tien, Master Roshi, and Piccolo Jr. all use crazy superpowered techniques. So why does it seem as though everyone's forgotten about these super fighters? Clearly, the announcer for the World Martial Arts Tournament remembers Goku, stating he missed their exciting matches. So how does nobody else remember? We can respect the Z fighters wanting to keep their lives a secret, but the fact is, they haven't been doing such a good job. Before you go, we just have one question for you. Do you love to binge watch movies and TV shows? If so, we have a brand new channel for you called The Binger. Head on over there for more great videos just like this one. So, what did you think? Are there official answers for these unsolved mysteries? Did we leave any major unanswered questions out? Do you have any explanation for these mysteries? Let us know in the comment section below, and don't forget to subscribe to CBR for more Dragon Ball videos. Thanks for watching.